I'll just repeat this safety warning. This you'll recognize if you go to Bunnings is a material called MDF, which is medium density fiberboard. You can cut it with a saw so long as you use a respirator or some sort of protection, but under no circumstances use it for wood carving because the dust that comes off it is very, very serious, a very, very serious effect to the point where really it should not be offered for sale in Australia. But however it is, but if you want to do any wood carving, do not under any circumstances use this stuff. Cut it in squares, fine, no problem. But wood carving, use it carefully. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start where I would normally finish, and that's by demonstrating a finishing. All right. The finishing that I'm going to demonstrate here is gilding. Now, people usually associate gilding with gold leafing. They are two entirely different. Uh, it's gilding is usually sort of referred to as gold leafing. Gold leafing refers to the material, the actual process is gilding, right? Uh, what I use is uh, imitation gold leaf. Okay, it can be still very tricky to use, but this is a, it's taken me a long time to get any sort of proficiency at it. But I, I have gained a proficiency at it, uh, and if you do it properly and it works, well then fine. As I said to a few people earlier on, with gilding, if you hit, it, hit the nail on the head first off, you're fine. If you don't, well then you're in trouble. Because it's just like a domino effect, just one goes after the other. This is, this stuff you can buy, I don't think you can buy it in here. Uh, you can buy it from places like uh, Eckersley or the other one. There's the other one. However, it's try using the water-based one I think, it's, I, think it's a, I think it's a superior product or at least it has been for me right now just this this is a bit of plywood where i've cleaned the top on it and for a reason later you'll see why just sort of give it a, a bit of a spreading like that I think actually what it is, it's a form of liquid latex. At least that's my guess. I don't know, but that's my guess. So spread it out onto your piece. Like that. Now the reason I'm doing this first, which is the f normally you would leave finishing until the end, is because you have to leave it for a couple of hours for the siding to dry. So any sort of Once you've applied applied the sizing, which is just a different name for glue, I don't know why, it'll stay tacky for up to 24 hours. But you don't really want to do that, although it's something that's handy if you can keep up your sleeve. You can try it with the paper size. No, th this is a proper gilding size. Uh, and I'm not going to argue with the experts. <laughs> if the experts <laughs> say to me, use proper goal leafing size, well, then that's, that's what I'll do. Is, um, uh, especially with this, I've learned that you shut up and listen to people who <laughs> know what they're talking about. Because there's been days where I've spent a whole day at it and I've done nothing but a series of disasters. Uh, because it's it's quite a difficult thing to pick up, uh, not so much because of the process, but because it's very, very easy to become disheartened by it. Um, because when you, when you do something and you do it quite a few times and, and you keep getting, uh, you keep getting failures, it's easy to lose heart. And believe me, I lost heart in doing any gilding sort of side off. As I was saying to Paul there at the start, as a demonstrator, generally speaking, 
the only thing that you can mistake a thing that you know you can do well. So I'm taking my life into my hands, showing you how to do this. Because I am not a professional gilder by any standard. I'm not even particularly good at it. But I can't give you this up. Except the rules. Uh, uh, later on, I'll show you an example of something that came in really, really handy for me on a personal basis. Okay, so make sure you, that, that you do the edges as well. And I dare say there'll be quite a few of you that will say, oh, I know just the thing that I can do with this. But that's, there's 25 sheets in there. Okay, that's $17 out of Eckersley. So it's not horrendously expensive. And if you want to buy proper gold leaf, it's about, think, about $125 for three sheets, three inches square. So it depends on your finances. It's a bit outside my financial range, but it's good enough for what I want. I'm a hobbyist. You have to leave it for at, around at least 10 seconds, uh, 10 minutes, for it to become tacky. You have to be able, be able to just sort of touch it and be able to stick it and it goes away. Now, you got a brush like that. Now, these brushes, they, they, can, be, they can cost a few dollars, right? Well, that, well, because this is water-based, it's quite easy to, to clean like that, right? However, after you've used it uh, a few times, the gilding, uh, the, the siding gets in there and it becomes stiff. Once that happens, put it in a bit of trips. That's why it got absolutely beautiful. Um, now, there's two. Get in there. Now, Peter. I hope I don't disappoint you. <laughs> There's two different surfaces that you can use. Now this, this is plywood, right? On one side, it's rough, and on the other side, uh, well, the other side is rough as well. But the stuff, and it's called, depends on, on your background, it's called either gesso or gesso. I think the, most, the proper pronunciation is gesso, right? Um, this is uh, homemade stuff. What it is is one part uh, talcum powder, and one part ordinary PVA glue, and yeah, and mix them up. Uh, add in a few drops of water, and that'll <coughs> thin it off. Right. Um, well, what a, a, a teaspoonful or half a teaspoon, so long as it's run run already equal pressure. You can just, you can just stick your finger in there. Right. So what I've done with this one is, I've put the um, Stuff on uh, just on this half here, right, and it's dried off. So I'll just I'll give it a bit of a sand off. And this will show you the difference between Yeah, just a little bit of water just to thin it up and then just just pour it on and I rub it in with my fingers so that it goes into the pores of the wood and what happens is it's very very simple um, the PVA glue uh, goes goes hard and the talcum powder is stuck in there <laughs> it's really is very very simple right um, I, I, I dare say like I've been using ghetto for hundreds of years they, they've probably got uh, there's probably about 5,000 different recipes for it, but that's the easiest, quickest, and cheapest uh, version that I've come across of it. And like most people, um, economy is the word. So I've got that right up now. Now you don't want to, you can use a damp brush, but not. Now, a word of warning here, use this stuff right and you get that white milky powder. Do not pour it down the sink, 
because it will lie in your sink. Now that's a very, very powerful adhesive. You can imagine what's going to happen to you, happen to you, happen to your pipes. Pour it out on the grass. Let the worms deal with it. As I said to, 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 uh, to the early arrivers, essentially I'm a wood trimmer. Um, but a couple of years ago, I'd, well, I went, I went on a trip to Italy and I'd done the art galleries in Italy. And you imagine what the art galleries in Italy are like. They're just absolutely gobsmacking. And uh, some of the, I had a look at, at um, Trajan's column in Rome. And I just thought that the, that the, The bas relief work on that was just absolutely fabulous. Uh, so I just decided to have a go at it. You know, uh, it took me a long time to pick up relief carving. It's not uh, an overly easy pr process, uh, but I've got there. Um, as I sort of passed around earlier on, that's an example of work that I do. Okay. So now that's, that's, that's bas relief carving uh, combined with piercing and thin walled wood churning. Thin walled wood churning is, is a very difficult uh, thing to pick up. That one, <laughs> that one I brought in is usually what goes wrong. <laughs> that's pyroxy, that's yeah, because uh, I, I told Andrew that I would do a bit of a demonstration on pyrography. And uh, he said no, because of the smoke detectors. <laughs> We don't want to have a mass shower to get there. Uh, <laughs> but however, the reason that there's so much work on that, and there's a good lesson from it, is because um, you have a look at it. Uh, I've, I've done, a, I've done a, a, a little bit of piercing on it, but not a lot. But the size of it was too thick, so I put it back on the lathe. And boom! All of a sudden. And any wood turner can tell you that's exploded. If you have a look, you'll see there's one two major glue lines or glue, I've got pieces of the major glue and back together. That's the part <coughs> that I couldn't find. That could have went absolutely anywhere. But I had already done all of that marking and all that drawing and it wasn't going to waste it. So I thought, well, I just use that as a practice for, um, for pyrography, right? Biggest lesson I learned with pyrography, minimize it. Do not use it all over because pyrography has taken over that. Okay. See what I mean? Now, if you have a look on the inside, you can see where, where the two lines are. Get in there. Um, what else did I pick up from the uh, What I'm going to do is, I'm going to give one of you an opportunity to do a bit of gilding. <laughs> which I've brought along just a little bit just a little one so that if things do go pear shape well at least I can say well you can you, you try and see how you go with it Well, they, they tell you that it'll last for 24 hours. I wouldn't want to leave it that long. But gilding, once you, once you get the hang of it, it it's such a challenging thing. Firstly, you say, I enjoy challenging things. I don't see the point in doing anything that's, that's easy to do. You know, if anybody can do it, well, so, well, so what? What's the point of doing it? You know? And believe me, there's people out there that are a lot better at gilding than what I am. I notice that I keep referring to the term gilding, not gold leafing. So what's the difference? The only difference is that with gold leafing, you use sheets, but that's sheets of basically of, of brass. 
with gold leaf you can use 24 karat gold now gold leafing pure gold uh, is only three microns thick now that micron is a, is a thousandth of a millimeter if you put a sheet in your hand like that and go like that by the time you reach the floor it'll be decimated it just tears up to pieces it's just that thin how they used to do it in the old days was they used to take one ounce of gold and you might see how small that was put it between two bits of leather and start bashing it and bashing it and bashing it until they got a, a, a diameter of one meter now that's how they've done it originally that's how they would have done the Roman Morocco in, in Jerusalem that's probably the world's most famous example of, um, of, uh, of gilding and the other one as I said earlier on is the, the, the rails around Buckingham Palace but those gold like the, the black rails with looks like gold paint it's not gold paint that's 24 karat gold mm. so there we go right uh, I'm now going to take my life into my hands and if any of you decide to laugh you can lay right in This really is the most incredibly fine finicky stuff. I just, for anybody who's never come across this before, I'll just pass around a small piece of it. Now that's how fine the material that you're dealing with. Very, very fine. So. <laughs> it, comes in these it comes in these booklets. They're not overly expensive. The reason that it sticks to your fingers or your hand is because of static electricity. Right, Peter. Amazing, that's not the words that I was using. I can tell you that. This is just ordinary baking paper. That's all. As I said, if it goes pear shaped, it goes pear shaped from the start. And this is like that works. Huh? Uh, a packet of 25 is about 17 18 dollars so it's not horrendously expensive right now this is this is the type of thing that I, uh, that I was talking about it's just so easy to um, to tear it and once you tear it that's when you have difficulties with it right however I think I'll be able to to manage this one if I don't I'll find somebody to blame. So, as I said, if you think it's easy, I've got a piece here. And anybody who wants to can stick their hand up and have a go. Right. Now, this one has gone tacky. But be watching. I'll just just pass that around and just touch just touch it up. Touch it with your finger. Now that's that's gone tacky. That's what you call tacky. And that, according to the bottle, will last for 24 hours. Be useful for 24 hours. So I would, I would like as much as possible to make this a hand-on experience for you. No, that's that's not a spray. That's uh, gold leafing. You can get that at places like Eckersley or somewhere like that. 
if you could buy it from a jewel, Australian jewellery supplier, that's what I'd buy it from. Now, it's not because of coronavirus, it's because of my breath. Seriously. Reason for this. Get it straight back. Just pull it tight, straight over again. You get to do that part there. And take this paper off as soon as you can. Uh, if I can demonstrate this absolutely perfectly, I'll go home quite satisfied. The rest of it I'm quite, I'm quite confident about because I don't know what I'm talking about. I don't, I don't really know what I'm talking about here. All I'm doing is having a go. Now, when you've reached that stage, turn it over. Now, this grease group paper is the secret to your success. If you touch that... Uh, gilding material with your, with your bare fingers, you'll tear it. No doubt about it. I can guarantee you'll tear it. But with this, it doesn't matter. And with this, you can get all the air bubbles out of it. Hmm? Uh, you could try a roller if you wanted to. Yep. I'm sort of a, a hands-on person. Um, you could use anything that you want. Just so long as you make sure that the that the, that the gilding sheet is is down there properly. Now the the big part here. Now the reason that I've brought along a piece this size is so that I can. Absolutely take me life under my hands. I'll just tear that off. Never use that again because there's, there's gilding, uh, gilding uh, uh, sizing on it. And you've seen how easy it is for it to stick. Right? Now that's not bad. I'm quite happy with that. I'm quite satisfied with that. Okay, right, no, oh, no, not finished yet. Not finished yet. Um, the other thing, now some people what they do is, to finish that off, they'll put the second leaf on that straight away, right? And they, if you're good enough at it, you can get it so that you can uh, go along that line and you won't see a single line, okay? Personally, I'm not that confident at it, I'm not that good at it. I've made perfectly clear that I'm not a professional gilder, and I'm not... 100% good at it, but I can get, I can, I can block the way through. And that's what I'm doing today. Blocking my way through. So what I'll do here is I'll just take a tiny little bit of sizing like this. Now this little thing at the back. There's two things, getting something to hold on to, and also later on, you'll see the reason behind this. So just put a little bit of gilding, or sizing, gilt sizing, across there. Does this um, leaf that you're using, does that change colour over time, or it stays? Yes, it's colour? basically based on copper. Now, with pure gold leaf, gold never tarnishes, that's why it's... Um, but I really wouldn't suggest that you try proper gold leaf until, until you've mastered this. Uh, now th this is a mixture, it's, a, it's something called slag metal, or generally speaking, uh, imitation gold leaf.
Uh, you can also get it in uh, aluminium, which is silver, uh, copper, just pure copper, uh, and you can also get a copper that's been heat treated and it's got the blues and the, it's got, yeah, there's different stuff you can get. Hello. Hi. 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 But you've died, so just in time. So, so the first one done. At least I've got half of it done properly. I can sort of sleep okay. I can have. So I can do this. So, any questions you've got to ask me? No. I guess that I can work with that. See ya. That's not a tremor, that's fear. Well, I suppose you could always say that that's what I can do. Now that'll be, that'll be okay for this particular section. Because it's a lot smaller. However, as much as you can, make sure it's a sheet of lead, as flat as possible. Right, I've got that bit of a tink out. That's one up for me. So I've got the best edge that I've got. I know exactly where the end where the end of that gilding goes, right? So what I do is, okay, that's where the that's the edge of the gilding is. Take it in another three, four, five, ten millimeters, whatever you want, enough to make sure that you overlap. Once again, hold that down tight. Now that's a bit of cardboard, beautiful backing. Ordinary baking uh, baking paper. Fold it over. Press up tight along the edge like that, and then go along right there. And take that paper away straight away. Do not leave that there because things will stick to it. Once again on the other side, pull it tight. Like that there. Now the only reason that I've learned how to do this it's just pure obstinate because the one thing I hate doing is being beaten or something. If I want to do something, I'll just keep at it and keep at it and keep at it until I either do it or accept the fact that I can't do it. And it's just, it's so easy to forget a process. A particular piece, you know, or a particular um, method that you have to use. It's just so easy to, to forget it. Oops. Okay, now once again, you want to use a roller? I, I wouldn't use a roller, certainly not, not, certainly not on the bear. Uh, on the bare on the bare leaf, um, with the uh, with the baking paper, you probably get out of it. Um, I find it's just as easy, although that's all I've ever done. And again, we'll just it cost me a fortune to learn how to do this. I was going into Eckersley and they never said, hello Peter, go late. So yeah, right on. Okay. Now 
I've tried doing some gold leafing. Well, see, I'm referring to it as gold leafing, but it's not gold leafing. It's really um, some of the wood turnings. And on a, on a cylindrical object, it's extremely difficult. So there we go. We can pat that on, just hold it by that there, right? And you can see where the sheets have overlapped. I've overlapped them for a reason. That reason shall become a grace at the end of the day. So it's not an ex horrendously expensive thing to do, but when you get it done properly, it's very, very delicate. It's a couple of little jobs. So that's, oh no, it's not. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Now who wants to have a go at it? Right, okay. Well, there's, there's. This is just to make myself feel good because I know you're going to mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that, that's not the finished uh, object yet. There's, there's another process we're going to use. Another two, actually. Another thing about these sheets is when they're putting them through the cutting machine, they have a habit of sticking along the edge there, which means that it's not your own fault. It's just that it's stuck there. But when you pull it, it tears. When it tears, that's when you get all sorts of trouble. That could be really nasty and say, well, there's no one to should have released myself, but I wouldn't do that to them. Oh, it's a couple of people. Where's my scapegoat? Up here, Cam. Let's come, let's come out here. Are you right handed? Well, then you probably want to have good access to your left hand, okay? What you do? Very gingerly. Right there. And just go plop. So I need to stick that box down. That's that's really neat. Very very important. Okay, so there we go. Now, get your plunk. Just like a car tire. That's it. Right. No no no. Right. Leave it. Okay. Pick it up. Put it tight. That's it. See how it folds over beautifully. Get in the edge there. Fold it. Put it tight along there. That's it. Make, make sure, make sure that the that the job doesn't move on the leaf. That's okay. Welcome, welcome to leafing. Oh, there you go. I'm sweating and it's just <laughs> sticking to me. Right, okay. Uh, do do the, do do the two short ends now. Put that now, now hold that down. And hold that tight. Yeah, you can see what the little that's a little stand there. Do 
yellow short end. Hold it tight, and that's it. And then got a good, uh, got that. That's okay. That's okay. Don't worry about it. Well, what's that? What? What? What will do? I told you, you're gonna mess it up. Okay. Now, I, I was doing this months and months and months having experiences like that. Okay, hold it down tight, fold it over. That's it. Gee, you're not gonna let me in, are you? <laughs> You should be wearing the mask, actually. Whatever. Well, I was telling a lie about coronavirus, actually, I have got it. <laughs> so, hold on, how'd you get it again? Uh, ah. <laughs> so, take it like that there, upside down, turn it upside down, and rub it in. That does two things. Gets it down under the sizing, gets all the wrinkles out. Or the majority of the wrinkles out. Aha! Uh -huh. Now, that's what we're doing. See? Now, there's a couple of little flaws there, and I'm, I'm, I'm not, being, not being nasty, but I'm glad to see that you've done that because it gives me an opportunity. To show you how to make a repair. Oh no, no, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah. Just there's a slight little bit there. There's two little bits there where the where it is torn. Two right there. And there's an operation like this, you go boom, 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 you go straight down. Do not go boom, boom, go boom, boom, you're lost. Now, I'm going to show you the value of these things. Which most people say, I hate them. Just plunk that on top of there. Take a brush like this. Once again, straight. This is this one here. Is that the point of use of it? If you're doing something like a proper three-dimensional shape, yes. You use a brush to, to pop it down. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. But I'm not going to demonstrate doing that here. Believe me. I've already taken me me life in my own hands going going this far. Now that little, there were a couple of little tears there, and when you do get a little tear, that's how you fix it up. Just put another bit of go leaf on top of it, and you'll see why at a later date, at a later time for that, hopefully. Um, why? Yeah, you need to soak and dry. Yeah, you're supposed to leave it. Well, really, leave it, leave it for 24 hours, and that doesn't. I don't mean overnight. I mean 24 hours by the clock. Um. And that will give it a good solid dry time. At the end of this little demo, uh, I'll show you how to finish it off. You see, you see that that's how sticky the sizing is. All all the done with just that little bit of dunk, 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 and it's picked up little bits of sizing on it, and, and the the uh, gold leaf is stuck to it. So it's a very meticulous operation, uh, but. Very satisfying when you get it done properly. Let's see what I mean. You can just see. And your worst, biggest enemy is static electricity. Because that's what sticks to your fingers. 
stuff is on each side. The way these stick to it, twigs is like this, that's why I do it so quick to hold here. I don't want that. If you want to pick it up with twigs, you can put straight in there, do it as quick as you can. Well, if you hang around, steady electricity will take over, and good evening, over. You will have no chance. The other one is this piece here. Oh, it's gone nice and tacky. Um, one side is untreated uh, plywood that's still got the course. The other side has got the gesso on it. Like that. Or the gesso. I call it the gesso. It's a bit pompous. There you go, it's nothing pompous about now. Looks as though I've done a demonstration on gilding and it's fairly successful. But as successful as I could have really could have hoped for. And very good. What I really want is to use all the leaf here today, knowing that you've learned something of value that you can actually use yourself at home. Because gilding is just one of those things. Uh, proper gilders, if you try and get information out of them, it's like beating blood out of a stone. They're just not interested in sharing their techniques. Apparently, glass blowers are the same. Wood turners, on the other hand, anybody who wants to know what I'm doing or how I'm doing it, not a problem. I'll just show them now. Wood turners share share their secrets and their techniques. Glass blowers and and uh, gilders do not, unless you're an apprentice. Now I'll just demonstrate this 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 again. So sorry, is it Angela? Angela. Um, show just exactly how easy it is to get this part wrong and it really is but the best way out of it is to be quick about it right okay pull it tight over you're done you see but that requires confidence and confidence is is, is something that takes a while it's like flipping a pancake you know, like if somebody's, oh no, that hasn't stuck. Ah, oh, I forgot to put the sizing on the inside. There we go. Okay, I made a mistake. Let's see if everyone is, uh, no, I won't. I'll finish it off properly. I'll put the sizing on, and regardless of what the rules tell me, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll do it up straight away. But you're supposed to wait 10 minutes, but we'll go for this here. Just a damp, damp tooth br uh, uh, brush, that's all. If you use too much water on it, you'll dilute the, the, uh, the glue, and it just won't stick, which is to be expected. The next thing I'm going to show you is the um, the piercing and the bass relief. Uh, is there any wood turners here? No. 
Okay, let me put this away. What you can do, you can have a place like Vinnie's or a Salvation Army. You can, you'll get a, it won't take you long to find an old wooden fruit bowl. And you can use that to do what I'm going to show you. Understand exactly how useful this can come in. I'm about to see how easy that. I just have to trim this. You can use much of this stuff as you like because it's virtually worthless. You can actually buy uh, the fl these flakes uh, in a bottle about that diameter or about that for about 20 bucks. Um, it's not something that I would personally use unless I, I, I up my skills by a very, very large degree. This should show you the difference between using gesso and a textured surface. The wood textured surface, I, I think, is just beautiful. I, I prefer it to the smooth one. That's something people prefer the smooth one. Just personal taste. So that's the basics of gilding. Um, the basic ingredient, <coughs> perseverance. Be prepared to make mistakes. <coughs> Don't be afraid of them. You learn from them. And wear a mask because there's nothing worse than wolf. And I tell you what, you go like out of one of those sheep and you look about for it. Right, well now that's that's me out of the woods. Oh God, God, I've got it. I've done it. I've done it. Oh. I was terrified of that. Absolutely terrified of it. Not 100%, but you can see the the process and what it is and how it works. Um, and you can there's one particular use for it uh, that I just came across just by accident, and it was a very personal issue to myself, but it was um. It was wonderful. So, this is the finished article that I make. Pierced and bas relief. And then it's just finished. I know it can be clear acrylic that you can get from Bunnings for about eight bucks. Oh, that wood. Yeah. This, this wood is Jacaranda. Jacaranda is a beautiful wood to work with, it really is. Uh, when I was in Italy a couple of years ago, I was on the galleries, and one other thing that I noticed about the ancient Greek ones was that when they first started marble sculpture, it was usually of a god of a warrior standing like that there, absolutely dead straight, no wings in sight. You know? Later on, that's when the movement came in. But what I noticed was between the wrist and the hip, there was a little strut of marble left there. And I asked the uh, tour guide, well, why, didn't, why didn't they remove it? Very simple, because when they first started doing it, 
and I was making the mistakes and learning. Boom, we got there. You start there with a well, chisel away on an arm like that there, and then you get down here and you hit it with a hammer. What's it going to do? It's going to break off. So, what they've done was they left that little strut there, and that gives structural strength. Right? So, you'll notice around here, just at the end of the leaves, both on the top and the bottom, there's little struts that attach it because if I was to do all of those leaves all the way around, there'd be nothing holding it together. Maybe that's an idea, maybe that's something that I might try doing later on. Okay. Um, I'll show you. Well, the first thing that you need to know is the uh, the leaves. I, I, I've been doing leaves for quite a few years, and my favourite by a mile, and I just love them, is the gum, gum leaves. Gum leaves are wonderful simply because they're so variable. You never get two gum leaves the same, and they've usually been predated. And there's been chunks taken out of them and they're all over the place now and they're just wonderful. There's one particular gum leaf that I've had at home for certainly well over two years, probably three years is one leaf. And I still use it. It's only about that size there. But it's it's bent like that and the ends been chopped off it and well you have had a bit of a bite out of it. So uh, it's a really interesting piece. And the other thing about a leaf is when you put it down like that. You know, got the shape of the leaf, you turn it over, you get the shape of a different leaf. However, what I'm going to show you is how to do these leaves. Now this one here, I sort of, I've done this a while back, and uh, it shows the different stages that I've got of doing something like this. And you say, you can go into Vinnie's and get yourself a, um, an old wooden fruit bowl and be something to work on, something to play around with. At the end of the day, you'll be stopping it and say, ooh, proud of myself. So this part here is just the pure drawing. And what I've done was, I just get some leaves and I tack them on and trace the outline. If you're an artist and you can draw leaves or whatever, uh, Celtic Knotwork is a very, very good one. Um, if you go on the web and just, uh, Look up for um, bird silhouettes or dolphin silhouettes, anything like that. Because with birds and the wings are stretched, you can do the same thing. You can overlap them because all these things have to overlap to keep the structural integrity there. Right? So that's that's the leaf as it's drawn. That's the uh, outside of it. Uh, as it's been incised, the first incision. Then you get the, uh, the, the the first set of removal, first set of piercings, and that goes around. And you'll notice just around here. Be careful about your camera. Uh, you'll see those black spots. Those black spots are the struts that I was telling you about that are seen in Rome. That great soldier. But he had both, yeah. So it's those struts, I'll pass that around, uh, that hold it together and, ma and make it so important. Here is where I've done the final uh, work on the leaf. And uh, I'll put in the, uh, the midrib and the, uh, the veins. It's well and truly worth go going to the trouble of of putting in the midrib and the vein because it puts in an added dimension. Because initially, if you just go, just leave a flat leaf there, well then it's a leaf, okay. But it just doesn't look interesting. If you put a contour on it, and then the veins on it, all of a sudden you've got an entirely different object. Okay. So what I'll show you first is how to. Do the leaves. Now there's a particular technique to doing the leaves. Believe it or not, it's a wooden pen, a couple of old machine pens. Because leaves, whenever they're lying on the on the forest floor, they're not like that. Right? I'll tell you, big as a big as it is. Like that, right? Not that you want to try and replicate, but however, to do it properly, there's a particular technique. Right. 
antenna is done. This is a gum lick. Take your pencil and just put in a fine line on the outside of the leaf. Now, if it's a very, very plain leaf, you can cheat and you can put in a bug bite there. Adds a bit of interest. So what? Who's gonna who's gonna who's gonna care, right? So on the outside edge. You do a fine line, and there's a reason for that. Okay, and it's called human nature. Um, so you do that fine line. If you're an artist, you can do whatever sort of whatever you want. Now, a very important part is the midrib. Uh, just. A dotted line down there where the midriff should be. And for the midrib, you put on a very thick, very heavy line. Different in entirely from the outside one, and there's a reason for that. We can tell it explain to you. So you see the difference there, and the the outside uh, line and, and the, the midrib. Now, you see the gum lick. Look at it. Isn't that absolutely beautiful, eh? It's all twisted and bent and all the rest of that. Okay, so we'll put it down there. We'll cross it over this one here. Now, here is the most important part of it. If you want to use, oh, it doesn't matter what you want to use, if you want to use gum leaves or if you want to do something yourself or if you want to use bird silhouettes, that's entirely up to yourself. You take it around, place it around. Now, once you come to a line, an outside line, you stop over the other side and then continue your drawing all the way around. Look at it there. Come to that line, stop, never ever cross over a line. And I'll show you why. Okay. Okay, and you don't have to be fancy about the edges. Oh, this is a daggy old gum leaf. Okay. Look good. Look good. Now, if I had have drawn that line straight over there, uh, just for this demonstration, I'll do it. It's two leaves lying on top of each other, and they don't really have any order to them. Right? Once. I remove, well, I remove those lines that I just drew, drew in. Now remember, you're drawing here, so you've got as much artistic license as you want. Once I, I've removed those lines, you can see that that leaf is lying on top of this one. See that? Because you can't see the entire profile, like that there very important because it gives us uh, a look of reality and as much as artists love unreality for this particular purpose we want a bit of reality now, once again third one and I'll show you a little trick here for the third one Come to a line, you stop. Over here, come to a line, outside edge, stop. Okay, over here, 
outside edge, stop <coughs> the outside edge. The leaf, it doesn't matter because it leaves don't have a shape, a specific shape. Some people will say, actually, that one is fairly regular, but uh, that's a bit of a uh, uh, lily for me. Leaf. No, what we need to have done here is clarify things. Now, you can see. This one here, which is the last one that I've done, is lying underneath the other two, right? Okay? And that's because I've, I've observed that uh, principle, never cross an outside line. Now I'm going to make a liar out of myself. And, this one there, okay. We shall, I shall draw, I shall cross over the line. Because remember, you've got artistic license. It's entirely up to you. And remove that outside edge line there. Because anything to do with the ice, you want a bit of variety. Now, that leaf that had been sitting on top of both of them it's sitting underneath that one, but on top of that one. It's just an illusion, which is really what any sort of art is. Okay? Just a little trick, but it's invaluable. I use it all the time. So, that's how you do the leaves. Once you've done the leaves and everything's drawn up, then now we get into the action. Although, mind you, after that sighting, <laughs> this is a breeze, believe me. I've been having nightmares about this the last fortnight. Now, is anybody familiar with these burrs? Are you familiar with these burrs? Right, now. I've got one millimeter, two millimeter, and three millimeter, and each has its own particular uh, application. Anybody familiar with what these are? It's a micro motor. Okay. That's worth about sort of six hundred dollars. Okay. You can go to Bunnings and you can get one of theirs for about sixty or eighty dollars or something like that. So you don't need to spend a huge amount of, of money on it. Uh, with a micro motor. The motor is actually inside there, and there's no, because usually with a, with a Dremel, you've got the big long lead, and you get it all twisted, and it gets burned up, and all the rest of that. But with a micro motor, you don't have that problem. And it's, it's the same with any sort of... Right on. I'll show you how to do the incisions, right? Now, this here I've already done the incisions, the first, the initial incisions. I, I stress that they are the initial incisions. When you're doing this, same as anything else, give yourself every opportunity to make a mistake and to recover from it. Okay? So that's what I'll show you how to do. That's the start of it goes around through the incision, through the piercing, and then all the way around through to the final finished product. So, bring the speed up high. And what you do is, right up. Let me take this off and go. Okay. This is the one millimeter. Yes, this one millimeter, two millimeter, and three millimeter. Start on the one, right? Now, I'll I'll just do this first one, and I'll pass it around and have a look where the incision is. 
Just remember it, there's a reason for it. The reason? You give yourself every opportunity to recover from a mistake. Or, as they say in the uh, in the trade, a redesigning opportunity. Now that black piece, the strut, that's because it's I've gone so solid. It's quite prominent. Very, very important. So that stops the fight. Now, you have a look at that, and you'll see the incision line is about a millimeter inside the actual line. Hmm? One millimeter. Uh, cross cut fissure. Okay, cross cut fissure is, 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 is miles ahead of the rest of them. Sim simply because, uh, well, one of these, if you're using, if you're using an ordinary twist drill, uh, if it hits either a knot or a bit of um, a bit of a hard grain, it'll go off with it. So the cross cut fissure goes straight through. They're, they are worth the weight in gold. So you'll see where the line is done just slightly on the inside. Also, a very important technique that I'll, I'll explain to you. Put your pattern on there, but you glue your leaves on? No, glue. just held them in place with a, with a bit of a pen. Yes. No, it's not. At the bar. Well, it's a. Uh, yeah, uh, well, it's more. Uh, it's, it's called a cross cut fissure. If you have a look at it, that's a three millimeter, and it shows you the pattern of it. It's got parallel grooves and then circular grooves. So just pass pass that around, okay, and you'll see the difference. Of yep, uh, marker and order. Uh, you'd be better off because I got this third hand, believe me, and. Um, You can actually they sell them in here. They're at six hundred dollars each, which is the standard price for something like this. I just got happened to get it very, very at a very, very good price. Uh, I got for two hundred dollars. He said, "Do you want to buy it?" <laughs> I said, "No, I want to buy it." Oh my God. So, okay. Now, here's a technique. It's called the tripod. You know, five point, three point. Okay, so you've got it there. You get your tip there. Now, if you just try doing it like that there, it'll go all over the place. It'll wiggle. Now, the tripod is where you're holding it at the back, and you just put your thumb on that part there. So you've got one, one, two, three, three points of setting it, and you'll be amazed. At the difference that it makes. One of the main difficulties in this is to sew it off because it covers the line, you can't see where the line is. So you then have a, what do you call it? A redesign opportunity. Not a mistake. Now with, with these uh, bits, because you're using them at high speed,
it's just it was only just at the edge of the quadrilateral. Oh, you'll certainly see it later on. It goes blue. That's simply because it's, 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 it's high, right? And also it's once once you start getting down a bit, it starts to get a bit more blue. Yeah, it's 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 blue. Yeah, but eventually it will break. But the reason it breaks, not because it's too high on it, it's because it's gone brittle. That's what it looks like. Yeah. Well, by the way, thanks for coming along, everybody. It's a, it's a real tickle to have so many people interested in your work. So thank you for coming. You're doing a line like this and it's fairly straight. Do not hold it like this. Hold it like this. Because what it does is you hold it like this as you move along, it cuts its own groove and it follows its own groove. But if you do it like this, it can go anywhere. Keep it at 45 degrees, much better result. Well, it's cheaper. Uh, it's, a, um, it's a less mistake prone. When you when you come to a sharp bend, you've got no point, you no other choice than to go around holding a square. But when you come to a straight line or a broad curve, hold it at 45 degrees. Right. So there we go. So I've just done the initial outlining. Now, as I was saying, I, you probably won't find a lot of fruit bowls and vinnies or whatever or a thickness of this they'll all be thicker right so what you do is just throw your shape around it whether it be leaves celtic knotwork or whatever right and do you all know what stifling is you ever heard of stifling stifling is usually referred to as um covering a multitude of sins which it which it does and believe me that's a round bar, two millimeter bar. Okay. So just imagine this is, a, this is a bowl, you pick about a vinny, it's half an inch thick. They're not going to do incision work with something half an inch thick. But if you draw the outline of your um, uh, or, or of your leaves, and stifling is just a series of dots. What it does is it just it gives you an outline for the leaves that you've just cut. And it makes them stand out, which which means that you're actually doing bas relief carving. This is bas relief carving along with piercing. The piercing will do the next little process we'll show you. I'll also show you something that's incredibly um, useful for you and that you can actually use yourself. You can get the material very easily out of Bunnings. There's 
one point actually and I'll show you later on where I do use stifling but not as an escape as a part of the part of the work. Never has to make people take photographs of my work. Mm. And please ask as many questions as you like. No, don't think it just because you ask a question that that I think you're stupid because. Believe me, I can answer all your questions on mistakes for one reason. Guess what? <laughs> I don't know them all. So we'll go back to this here. Oops, there we won't. Do you do any sanding there? Once you've cut it away? Oh, once, on the lathe I do, yes, while it's still on the lathe. Oh, okay. Before. But I mean, once you've cut out, once you've pierced, can you sand? Uh, no. No, there's a technique for that. I'll show you. Uh, that's a good question. Um, that's, I've got a very, very effective uh, way to do that. So what I'm going to do is first line of piercing. Right, now what I'll, okay, I'll start off. This is one millimeter. Okay, so we'll start at one millimeter. One millimeter to to write the shape, and one millimeter to cut all the way through. Now, what what I'm going to do is remove those two areas that are, that are stifled. So I don't really want them in this part here, right? Tell when you've gone all the way through with the sound. See just the bottom there, where there's a little back, where, where the incision has gone black, that's where you've got a heat build up. You'll see at the very tip of it, where it started to become discolored, right, that's just heat build up. Okay, and you're going to get that. It's not, it's not the end of the tool, far from it. But it doesn't mean that you're doing something wrong, it just means that. Okay, and this is all around, pass it around. You'll see that I've left just about a millimeter on the on the outside edge of the leaf. Reason for it. And the reason? Self protection. Well, what 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 is what is what is on the lathe, and that's still got. You see, at the bottom it's got two, two the two bottoms on it. Well, the, the bottom is the tenon. That's where the chuck grabs onto it. 
uh, and I'll spin it around and after I've cut out the shape of the of the bowl, well then uh, that, that's when I sand it. Yeah. Inside, oh, inside, inside there. Yeah. That that one I'll show you. That that's that, that's a separate process. Good question. I love getting good questions. It means it's interesting. And if you're interested, then I'm not wasting your time. But you see, where there's just a millimeter left there on the inside. I do. do you do it with a I rug? Yeah, I've got my own brand. How do you get it like a how do you get it like pyrography? Hmm? With pyrography pen. Oh, yeah. 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 With a pyrography pen you can make up your own yeah. Yes, yeah, you can make up your own brand. Okay, right. So I, I can tackle this quite aggressively, right? but the reason that I can tackle it aggressively is because I've done so much of it, I've got a good level of confidence in it, but it takes you a while to build up your confidence. Whenever, you build, whenever you're doing anything new, you don't start off as an expert, and I also know how to, um, number one, how to cut corners, and number two, how to cover up a mistake. And out of the two of them, covering up the mistake is the most important. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. Proposed attachments on a drummer. Sorry? Proposed attachments yes. on a drummer. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. You, you can't, do you, do you have a Dremel with the, with the lead on it? The lead? No, it's, um, it's got a battery, it's in the oh, Okay, right, oh, yeah, excellent, excellent, much, much superior, yes, yes. Um, there's a, uh, a selection of, of these birds in here that I like to look at with the lead. There's all sorts. But, okay, right. I went from one millimeter up to three. Yeah. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the shaping cut here. This is the final cut. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What are you, are you, I'm using the three millimeter bit, bit here. I'm using that for a reason. If you if you try if you try and do the, the final shape with a one millimeter, you don't have that much control over it. It'll just bite in. Okay. With a three millimeter, because it's such a bigger radius, it floats over. Okay. And there's two ways that you can tackle it. You can either do it this way, or you can do it that way. Okay? So I'll start off. The other thing about it is. In a situation like this, because you're supposed to be going in square all the time, whenever you're doing something that's round, you can put it in a square there. By the time it gets over there, it's not square. You see? So you don't get uh, a good square edge. And by cutting it in uh, just that little bit less on the outline, it gives you room to remove that and to correct that square. But oh mind you, you'll say that I'm later on you probably might think that I'm going a bit overboard. So for this one here, three millimeter. And you do it on a forward cut or Uh, 
with this part of the operation you can see inside the vessel and you can see where you're making a nice square cut. I presume that quite a few of you would be jewellery makers. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, just on the on the gilding issue. For those who weren't here, you can't buy pure gold, gold leaf. Very expensive, right? But you can certainly use this stuff to practice on. Right? With with the gold leaf squares, they come in a three inches square and they come on a leaf, and they've got sizing on the outside of it. Not on the inside. It's already pre sized for you. Probably depends on which brand you get. But what you can do is you can cut it in strips and boom, put it straight on without taking the paper off. Glue it on and then the paper just goes away. And you get the, 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 the pure gold in there. But that's only the pure gold. Very expensive to buy. Uh, it's more expensive than uh, than uh, than gold bullion because of the work that goes into um, into manufacturing it. Sorry? Yeah, you can get it in silver, uh, in, well, imitation no, no, gold, which is probably you'd have probably I'm have to shop around for it. Uh, Eckersley's, um, what's the other one? What's the other shop? Oxlade, yeah, there, there, there the other one, yeah. Um, you might have to uh, order it in. The last time that I seen pure gold leaf. Uh, it was in an art shop, uh, but they kept it in a safe. I asked to see it, and I got a dirty look, and I thought, you know, it's kind of a look, I'll see what it's like, yeah. And, and she spotted that I was okay, but you can imagine the potential for thievery there. Now, then a final cut, you can do your cuts forward, or you can do them backward, doesn't matter. Just so long as you just go up to the line nice and neatly, and you got a nice little square edge. This is going to give me a wonderful opportunity to demonstrate here why I've got one millimeter, two millimeter, and three millimeter first. The three millimeter, that's the one that you can use to go right up to the edge of the leaf. If you're a jeweller, um, you can, well, you can hone up your skills on the uh, on the imitation stuff. But at a later date, once you once you sort of gotten the hang of it, you can use real gold in your, on your uh, on your jewellery making. I got a mate who's um, he's an opal miner at Lightning Ridge. And uh, we've had some interesting discussions. But he does, does his own polishing and his own cutting and all the rest of that. And I've said to him a couple of times, why don't you try a bit of gold leafing on your jewelry? No! That's because he doesn't want to. It's 
people who can uh, mine opal and and dress up in in the jewelry. They've really, I'll tell you what, I take my hand off, my, my hat off to them. It's very, very much, it's a very, very highly skilled operation. see where I've used the three millimeter take it right down to the line okay but you'll notice in the corner because it's three millimeters it's, it's, it's fairly wide and it's, it's, a, it's a cumbersome looking um, uh, corner to it so the corner you want to look nice and sharp and for that you want to want the open up a two millimeter All right, huh? I'm glad you come. I hope I hope you learned a bit. Yeah, certainly a bit of that. Yeah, have a go at it. I wondered if my bunk mate just popped the volume of the noise standing back here and it was not actually a desk but the keys. I hope that they're hearing the objection and they're using it. Really? Yes. Hmm. It's high pitch and we Is lose our high pitch first. So ah, right, huh? So we don't actually hear it, but we still do the damage. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's okay. You had a call. You can see where the corners aren't really tucked in very well. <coughs> they don't look very sharp. Right, now, I've got a two millimeter bit. Now, the thing about about the broad one is, when you bring the broad one into a tight corner like this, it'll grab. And when it grabs, it goes joint all over the place. And then you will have trouble getting it out. Um, so, with the two, two millimeter one, it's much smaller. The, the one millimeter is just too small to do it properly. You just can't do it. Two millimeter gives it just the right, just like Goldie Lock. Just the right temperature. Just the right diameter. <laughs> 